Hey everybody, Cash Baggins here with another exciting episode of AFK Adventures Part 3, Episode 4, Bootstrapping. Honestly, I don't have a single clip from last week. My recording setup was all messed up for moving, which made me lose the two or three clips I did take, and I didn't really play much. But I, of course, kept gambling and trapping. Since I didn't get any clips, I thought it'd be the perfect opportunity to dive into something I mentioned in a previous video, using stats to unlock the secrets of the Goblin Merchant. Wait, I'm about to save you a ton of time. I'm getting deep into the stats here. It's only a couple minutes, but uh, use the use the chapter feature. Go ahead and skip ahead if you don't, I don't really care. Um, I'll give you the answer pretty quick. I'll highlight that. And uh, go ahead and skip to the, the results. Not, not a ton of gameplay this week, so yeah. I'm trying to save you some time. To do this, I used a technique called bootstrapping, hence the name of the video. Bootstrapping is a resampling technique from the frequentist branch of statistics. But before we get into the details, let me front load the answer for you here. Here's the estimated probability of pulling each rarity of item from the Goblin Merchant. Note, this data excludes accessories, which can only be uncommon enough. In other words, this data is exclusive to weapons and armor. I'll get to accessories later if I gather enough data on them. So far, I've purchased 1,138 armor and weapon gambles. The bar chart shows the estimated probability of each rarity and a 95% confidence interval. So, what's a confidence interval? It's just a fancy way of saying we're pretty sure the true chance of pulling an item of a given rarity is between X and Y percent based on the data we've seen so far. It helps us narrow down the range of possibilities even if we can't know the exact number. For example, for rare items in this chart here, the middle blue bar, my estimate is 34.4% and the 95% confidence interval is between 31.7 and 37.3%. That means I'm 95% confident that the real chance of getting a rare item lies somewhere between those two numbers. Now, a few more details while we put up the next chart about how bootstrapping works. I want to figure out the true chances of getting items of different rarities, but I only have a small Huge. amount of data. 1,138 pulls from the Goblin Merchant. With small data, Huge. my actual Large. results might be inaccurate really or biased. Bootstrapping helps with that. Here's how it works. Think of it I just like having a deck of cards. Every time we draw a card, we note what it is and then put it back in the deck. We shuffle the deck and do this thousands Millions. of times. This way I can simulate pulling items <laughs> many times without needing more data from the game. Thank God. By doing this, I get a better estimate of the true probability of each rarity showing up because I'm basically creating new samples from what I already have. Now, let's look at the histogram, and just how it ties into the bar chart I just showed you. This chart shows the results of those thousands of bootstrapped simulations for each rarity. The taller the bars, the more likely that estimate is. I tried this with various numbers of bootstrapped samples just to show how we become more certain with repetition. You'll notice that most of the estimates cluster around a certain value, and that's where our mean estimate comes from. The more times we do this, the more accurate the estimate becomes. It's kind of like flipping a coin. If you only flip it 10 times, you might get 7 heads and 3 tails, but if you flip it a thousand times, you'll get pretty close to 50-50. The law of large numbers says that the more we repeat in an experiment, the closer our estimates get to the true value. By doing this enough times, the distribution of each item's rarity percentage ends up looking like a normal distribution, thanks to the law of large numbers. And that's what lets us apply frequentist statistics, like calculating means and confidence intervals, because the results cluster around the true probability, about that 95% confidence interval. It's the range that covers 95% of the bootstrapped samples. In other words, 95% of the time, the estimate falls within that range, giving us a solid idea of where the true probability lies. If you guys like this kind of data-driven deep dive, please let me know in the comments. And if you want more stats or have questions, let me know what you're interested in. Okay, enough of that boring stuff. I'm on to the true purpose of the log, the money. I'm gonna keep it short here, but as you can see in the income and expense by category chart on the far left, 
gambling wasn't that profitable this week, and Trappin carried the weight. I also didn't play much, as is evidenced by the lack of spending on kits. Here's my gambles per day, still respectable, but here's the proportion of items falling into each sale value category, almost completely dry of valuable items. That led to a few negative days limiting profit. Overall, daily profit was still okay though. But the key moment is coming, and here it is. I made it to 63,669 gold this week. That's it. To the haiku. Dive in deep ocean. The shallows are where most stay. Crisp, pressured focus. You know, I understand that going deep into the details isn't for everybody. I think most people prefer just to get the answer and move on. But for me, the pressure of going deep, the need to get the details right, the nuance that comes with each new piece of information, it focuses me, it hones me in. When I start trying to figure something out, the first detail is the cookie, and if you give a mouse a cookie. But I digress. Take what you want from my videos, hopefully there's a bit of something for everyone. Also, I know most people don't make it this far, but it would mean a lot if you liked the videos, if you liked it on YouTube, and if you dropped a subscription, I'd be really grateful. Alright, see ya. In this incredible defensive display, the wolves swarm the single nugget, keeping him from getting help from other nearby nuggets. Eventually, the lone nugget is forced to give up the rock to the ravenous wolves and retreat.